Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Today I have a very simple question for you. Would you work for Facebook? I'd imagine the answer to be a resounding yes. After all, they are one of the most sought after companies to work for. But you might also have some hesitation here about all the controversies that have marked the company history, the backlash about how they've treated the user privacy, and perhaps going as far as feeling to be a part of the biggest surveillance machine ever created. But is there actually something to be worried about? In this video, we will see how they have become one of the academic research powerhouses, what they use their research for, and why, partially because of their checkered past, they might have become the very best company for working in fundamental research outside of academia. Let's dive right into it. The first question we need to ask is why do companies engage in research in the first place? Traditionally, applied research was split into two main areas, research and development and market research. Broadly speaking, the former creates new product or discovers new way to improve the existing products or the existing services, while the latter direct that development to bend it toward customer preferences. But a few big corporations don't stop there. Behemoths the like of Facebook, Google and Apple can afford something that is much more advanced and, crucially, much more expensive. Fundamental research the kind that produces papers and models rather than profit charts and design recommendations is both incredibly useful and dangerous for companies. On one hand, it has proven over and over again to have one of the highest return on investment across the board, but it also has high barriers of entry and a long payoff period. Most companies simply cannot afford to invest hundreds of millions into a research team whose result may be years away from the market and their potential uncertain. In other words, the high-tech nature of the products at Facebook gave them the reason to engage in fundamental research, and their size gave them the opportunity. But what's in for them? How do they translate the latest advancement in, I don't know, artificial intelligence in cold, hard cash. Fundamental research can impact most areas of a business, but here I'm going to divide them in three broad categories. Operational optimization, product development, and regulation compliance. Operational optimization targets problems and costs arising from the day-to-day -day running of the company. Operational expenditures are by far the biggest cost centers for any company, and in general, finding new ways to reduce them is always a smart business decision. And because tech companies play in the field of, well, advanced technology, they face unprecedented problems. Quite literally, problems that nobody had ever encountered before. In other words, their products and systems are so advanced and abstract that the challenges they face require the level of abstraction that is normally only found in academic research. For example, when Facebook wanted to optimize the packet routing in their data centers, they could easily have run the local optimization on the specific connections in each of their data center. But instead, they decided to develop a completely new network routing platform. This is a fundamental shift in perspective, and the study was built up from the fundamentals of computer science. This was incredibly expensive and intellectually challenging, and was only made possible by the economy of scale that Facebook can leverage. Because the saving grows with the number of datasets you own, it's simply not worth for smaller companies to embark in this type of project. The second way in which Facebook is able to reap financial benefits from their academic research is through the development of new high-tech products, especially in the hardware sector. The virtual reality Oculus Visor, for example, was only made possible by the in-house research and advancements in areas like computer visions, virtual reality, artificial intelligence, and more. But there is one last reason for Facebook in particular to engage in fundamental research, regulation compliance. Unlike the previous two areas, regulation compliance does not directly funnel into revenue growth, 
But nonetheless, it's obviously a fundamental activity to keep the company in business and away from the scrutiny of both the public and policymakers. Facebook has had a lot of problems with this in the past, partly due to the sensitive nature of the personal data they hold on their users, partly because of the advertiser-centric business model, which, in essence, revolves around targeting advertisements to their users, and partly because of the lack of regulation that first players often face, the company has faced a series of scandals in the past. The biggest one by far, and the one you probably have heard of, is the Cambridge Analytica scandal, in which personal data belonging to millions of Facebook users was collected without their consent by British consulting firm Cambridge Analytica, and then used predominantly for political advertising. To be clear, the blame here is on Facebook for how they managed and protected, or rather not protecting, their data, rather than for how the data was used, which was something that was largely outside of Facebook control. But some other scandals proved to directly involve Facebook research as well. The Wall Street Journal, for example, has compiled a comprehensive series of investigations into Facebook malpractices and misuses of their data, the Facebook files. The investigations were based on internal Facebook documents, research reports, online employee discussions and presentations to senior managements, and included some very disturbing cases. For example, in one instance, the company downplayed its own research on the negative effects of Instagram on their teenage users and never made the research public or available to academics or lawmakers who asked for it, until, of course, it was uncovered by the Wall Street Journal. In another case, Facebook ignored basic ethical guidelines by manipulating the news feed of nearly 700,000 users who did not know that they were the subjects of an experiment. What was the objective? To see whether filtering out positive content from their newsfeed would impact their users' mood. This would have never passed the scrutiny of an academic ethical commission, but the researchers at Facebook were able to do it without any pushback from the company. So the big question now is how much they have learned from their past mistake and what policy they have implemented for the present and the future of fundamental research at Facebook. At first, the chief technology officer, Mike Schröpfer, publicly apologized and set out new research policy. That was likely mostly PR damage control in the short term, but in the following months and years, Facebook followed through and significantly improved the transparency and ethics of its research. The most notable improvement was their renewed commitment to clarity and openness. The company now shares more information about the research project and collect all of its publications in a centralized, publicly available repository. We don't know if there is, and there well could be, a portion of the research that is deemed too impactful and therefore exempted from this policy, but so far none have been exposed. Additionally, the past scandals have put Facebook in the spotlight and the scrutiny from regulators is now constant and pervasive. They closed several loopholes that allowed exploits like the one used by Cambridge Analytica. They created an enhanced review process for the most delicate research topics and broadly embraced more ethical research practices. This process has largely eliminated the primary reason why many people would avoid joining Facebook research and has helped them restoring at least some of their credibility in the research world. Arguably, nowadays Facebook standards are as good as, or even better, than most other companies and competitors, specifically because of the scandals they have suffered in the past. This, together with their substantial resources and access to complete and diverse dataset, put Facebook back in the run as a place for groundbreaking research work, especially in areas such as artificial intelligence, data science and social dynamics. While it's a pity that it took such blatantly problematic practices and violations to reach today's research standards, as of today, they might well be the best place for fundamental research outside of academia. So there you have it, my take on fundamental research at Facebook and why they might be the best place for pursuing fundamental research outside of academia. Let me know in the comments down below if you've liked the video 
and what you'd like to see next. If you have any questions, feel free to pop them down below or reach out to me on my social media accounts. My handle, this one here, is the same across all platforms. Also, please consider subscribing to the channel and ringing the bell icon for more videos like this coming out twice a week on Wednesdays and Sundays. Until next Sunday, goodbye.